So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the scenario where France has a civil war. Now I just did a civil war video and you guys liked it a lot. So I'm gonna be doing France today, not because I'm running out of ideas, but because you guys liked the previous video, right? So if you do enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. All the support really helps out the channel. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into this scenario. So as of recently, France has been a very interesting country. I gotta learn a new vocabulary because I've noticed that in all these videos, I say interesting a lot and um, you know, it's interesting but their political status right now is it's i want to say it's similar to the united states's but we don't really have mass protests we just have crazy people uh france they have a lot of protests right now and it's against the government so uh what if that all breaks out into a civil war is what we're going to be looking at i'm going to be mostly basing this off of france's uh recent presidential election with macron and the other lady i forgot what her name was was it le pen I think that's what it was and yeah let's see how this plays out so protests in france start to kick up and they turn violent with this we have some of the members of the french government starting to draw up a resolution which would separate the country into two different parts uh, one which is pro macron and one that is pro le pen this divide is becoming more and more stark but eventually that whole resolution thing is thrown out the window and members of the french government start to literally fight each other the french president declares a state of emergency but it doesn't do much other than declare it and uh, from here we have protests turning into riots and riots turning into revolutionaries Re revolutionaries revolu people who want to overthrow the government something that france knows a lot about eventually groups in southern france start to rise up and they began to take over large parts of the country this also happens in northern france and in addition to this a pro reformist party takes place of paris so now france is in a full-on civil war with three different groups um, being the reformist in paris we have the original french government in the blue and then we have the let's call them the pro french revolutionaries in the red heads are about to be chopped off including macron who is um he's killed before he can leave paris with this the uh the world is going to look at france and sigh because once again france has a tendency to have a revolution every couple of years and they're a little bit overdue for one so uh here it is happening now the red team makes plans to meet up with each other and also to cut off a large portion of blue france over here so by doing this they start a spearhead out and eventually connect up with each other establishing a chain of supply but also cutting off this part of france from france from here france starts to invade france even more while france starts to invade france up north so now the blue team is going to go ahead and launch an invasion into this part of southern france since this is i think technically the weaker part it might be the same or it might be better i don't know but they want to take this part out and then focus on this part up north because this part is probably about to have paris and they do not want red team in paris so the blue team starts to move across the southern french countryside and is making some pretty substantial gains blue team france has been hitting the gym obviously central blue team france falls over over to the red team which allows for them to reorganize their troops and set up a better defense against this blue front line up north we have the red team completely taking out the green team and taking control of paris and from here they're going to go ahead and invade the northern normandy area in order to take over any french ports right now it is not looking too great for the blue team because they have lost a majority of the i want to say more important parts of france of course paris being one of them but also like all of this over here they only share a border with spain and then of course i guess they share a channel with england whereas the red team border with a lot of other countries so let's look at how the world is leaning right now like who is supporting who in this war similar to how i showed it in the previous german civil war video all right looking at this map here we can see that there is divided support for france and europe we have spain and italy supporting the red team whereas the uk and germany as well as belgium and luxembourg are supporting the original french government in addition to this we also have canada and the united states supporting the blue team but they're not really important they're just there to kind of be there um technically russia is also supporting the red team in france but they're not important so we're not we're just going to ignore them but these these guys right here the darker colors these are the guys you're going to want to pay attention to anyway the original french government is now going to pull a counter offensive in the north pushing the red team back and even entering the gates of paris although not capturing the entire city down south the exact opposite happens as they are now being pushed back by the red team and uh, the south area yeah but now we have a turning point in the war and it's going to be for the red team upon gathering a lot of troops and a lot of trainees they uh, pull off a enormous offensive in northern france which is going to wipe out a majority of the blue team's armies they reach all the way over towards Brittany and cut off the peninsula from the rest of france and from here it looks like the blue team is on the verge of surrendering except it's not because it's an aedas pro video and you can predict exactly what's going to happen next the blue european support countries are now going to officially join the war on the side of blue france with this uh, the red rebellion in france is 
pretty much screwed because this is going to outweigh that side by like a million thousand kilometers. The UK makes a landing in Northern France, similar to how it did in D-Day. I think I've invaded this area maybe 10 times and pointed it out maybe another 10 times. So I need to get more original with this content, except this content is really hard to be original with because it's essentially the same thing over and over again. Germany is now invading Alsace-Lorraine, big surprise there. And the red team rebellion is now gonna start getting split up into many different groups. First of all, we have the blue team capturing Paris, but the red team starts an invasion of Belgium. Belgium and takes out Brussels, essentially wiping Belgium out of the war because it is good for nothing. That's right, we're starting Belgium hate on this channel or something. I don't know. At this point in the war, France looks like a freaking jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, it's hard to tell what's happening here, but uh, it's about to get even more interesting because two countries are going to join this war, and those two countries are going to be the supporters of the red team, so Spain and Italy. With their entrance into the war, France is about to look like a freaking plateau of nothing because a lot of war is happening here, and a lot more is coming. With the aid and equipment of the Italians and Spanish, Red Team France is now going to kick ass in the south. France is pushed out of France, and Spain starts its invasion of the western French coast. The UK and the original French government managed to wipe out a rebellion group in the north and push back the Red Team from Paris. However, a large front line of Romance languages are coming. Now it's interesting because I look at this and we see Spain, France, and Italy fighting together. Those guys are all part of the Romance languages. And then we have the UK and Germany, which are part of the Germanic languages. They are supporting Blue France and, of course, Technically, Blue France is a part of the Romance languages, but it's essentially a war of languages here. Germany invades and liberates Belgium. Never thought I'd say that. And from here, we have the UK and Germany meeting up and taking over the coastline over here in France, cutting the red team off from the Northern Sea. But it's not like they'd ever have access to that because the UK wouldn't allow it. Eventually, all of Northern Red Team France is wiped out. And we now have ourselves a one-on-one -on -one fight with one ginormous front line. Hey, just a side mission over here, but Germany is secretly sneaking troops into Austria and down onto the border of Italy. That will be important later. Anyway, to make things a little bit more easier for the blue team here, we have the Netherlands joining the war on the side of the blue team. They mostly just joined to allow for the access of British and German troops in their country, and they're not going to send any equipment or troops down to the front lines. The blue team makes a slight advance in the south, making good gains against the Italians, but a Against the Spanish, they were having some struggles as they are continuing to push up the Western French toast. The Italians essentially fold over here in the east, and a lot of France goes back to France, and France begins its invasion of France. Yes. France. Finally, we have the blue team cutting off Italy and Spain from each other, which is going to serve as a huge blow for Spain because, you know, they were kind of living off of that Italian equipment. However, you know, technically you can, you can just kind of do that. Yeah. Anyway, remember those German troops I was talking about earlier? Yeah, they're invading Italy now. With all of this pressure, Italy is going to be forced to withdraw all of its troops from France, which leads to the surrender of this bit of France down here in the south. Italy now fights back against the Germans, only to realize that their whole ambitions over here was a suicide mission to distract Italy from France. And, uh, they start to feel bad because these guys are just put the die. Shame on you, Germany. How dare you do that? Back over here in the West here, we have the British and the Germans and the French pushing back the Spanish. Portugal randomly joins this war out of nowhere on the side of the UK, and their main goal is to serve as a distraction, but also to wipe out some pretty important Spanish areas which are used for the military complex. They do as much as they can, but unfortunately, this is about as good as they can do, and now they just have to defend and wait for the Spanish army to push them back. Luckily, though, this distraction serves as a good distraction as the Spanish are kicked completely out of France. And finally, the revolution is dead, and the Blue Team France will win. Corsica is unscathed. The Blue Team invades a little bit further, this time into Catalonia. Back over here, we have Spain kicking Portugal out of its country, but eventually all sides agree to a peace treaty, in which they will meet at, guess where, in Paris. Let's take a look at this treaty. All right, taking a look at this peace treaty here, not much is going to happen, of course, because this was the Civil War, but there are some interesting points that we're going to cross. Uh, Spain got screwed over immensely in this peace treaty. They were forced to release Catalonia, and in addition to that, they also lost a little bit of their northern coast, although it was just a little tiny bit. They're probably not too happy about that, and neither is Italy, who was forced to give up a good portion of their land over here. Although it was generally mountainous, it's still land that they probably shouldn't have given up. Corsica, interestingly enough, was given its independence, and their future is probably determined by Italy. And also interestingly, Alsace-Lorraine is given over to Germany as kind of a gift to show their gratitude for helping them out during the revolution. So yeah, an interesting treaty here, but it does reshape the borders of Western Europe. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. So if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. All the support really helps us out. Um, Interesting analytics, views wise, we're fine. So I don't care about views. I mean, I never really cared about views, Um, but you know, 
analytics we're talking about analytics watch time is down a lot and uh so is subscriber count and uh, i'm focusing in on that subscriber count subscribe i think we just hit 110,000 subscribers so that's pretty cool although now those kind of minus loans don't really matter which is insane to me because i have a plaque on my wall for every 10,000 subscribers i've ever hit so 10k 20k 30k 40k etc but now when we hit 10,000 subscribers it's within the 100k range so it doesn't like it's not as significant as those ones were so our next big milestone is 200,000 and that's a whole 90,000 away yeah that's a long way away we probably won't hit that for another two years uh, based on how it's going now but that's based on how it's going right now we can fix that by you subscribing so if you haven't already make sure to subscribe and majority of you guys aren't subscribed but it's 50 50 so if we can turn that other 50 into the 100 in terms of people being subscribed that would be awesome once again thank you guys so much for all the support on these videos and thank you for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one and of course, thank you to all the super fans. This includes Patrick Clauser, Yo Moma Moma, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Kylie Speaks Plays, Poland Country Ball, Dimitri, DW Cool Dude, Nevada Garbage Trucks, Yakko, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.